Hey everybody, it's Pierre. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. It's been a while since I posted a video. I've just gotten really busy with, you know, life and work and stuff. But anyway, today's video is about my red wolffish or rainbow wolffish, Erythrinus erythrinus. This is a fish that I've had uh, for several years, I think six years or so, seven, something like that. And I did raise it from a juvenile. I don't exactly know how old it was when I got it, but it was quite small, maybe three inches long. I've been keeping this fish in a sump underneath my 210 gallon aquarium, and it's been here by itself, doing well in general over the last year or so. Over the last few weeks, I've noticed that it's been less responsive. It hadn't been eating as much. And unfortunately today, I was getting ready to change the water and I looked in his tank and I found him still alive, but floating upside down. And I did try to move him around a little bit earlier. You know, he still kind of swims a little bit, but just looks really weak. I did turn off that heater uh, a while ago to make sure that he doesn't burn himself on it. Uh, I think it might be time to euthanize him. Uh, humanely and so this video is going to be pretty graphic I will be showing you uh, fish euthanasia and he just can't write himself uh, he has been acting kind of weak for a little while he didn't really show any overt signs of illness so it really looks like just old age and just kind of the body giving out I may do an autopsy on him after I, uh, I put him down some people do get attached to their fish and so I'll try not to be too emotional when I do this today but I thought it would be very important to show you uh, a humane way of uh, euthanizing a fish and now you know it's time to let him go because he's obviously suffering and I really don't know you know if there's anything I can do to treat him or, or, or help him at this point because of how he's been acting the last few weeks okay so one of the first things you want to do is check on the other inhabitants of the tank obviously he's not in the same display tank as these guys which this is my uh, Indonesian tiger my gold datnoid and uh, you know the bikers um, but he does share water with them, so essentially if there's any infection, you know, these fish would have displayed signs of an infection for a little while. But, uh, you know, they're all healthy, they're all feeding normally. So that really supports my uh, assumption or diagnosis that the wolf is just dying for whatever reason, most likely old age. So there are many methods out there that people have used to euthanize fish. The most humane that I've researched is blunt force trauma to the head of the fish to stun it and then decapitate it, ensuring that the brain stem or the brain itself is destroyed. Uh, obviously that's easier to do in a smaller fish whose head you can snip off easily with a pair of scissors. This is a little bit of a bigger fish, I'd say eight to 10 inches, nine to 10 inches, more or less. So that is a little bit impractical and also it's not really something you know, that I feel comfortable doing uh, given its size. So the other method uh, that I actually prefer in fish of any size that I have to euthanize is clove oil. And clove oil is a substance that you can normally buy, you know, for toothaches and things like that. But you can also use it to anesthetize fish for surgery. I actually used clove oil to, to anesthetize this particular wolf fish uh, to perform surgery on it a while ago. Um, and ironically and sadly, I, have, I, have, I will be using the same bottle of clove oil um, to euthanize um, the fish today. So this is the bottle of clove oil that I have on hand. I ordered it online from Amazon. You can probably buy it from other places, but uh, this substance basically interferes with the fish's ability to, to breathe, but it also kind of sedates them and it's almost like morphine for a terminally ill patient. So it's supposedly the most humane way to euthanize a fish. They just go to sleep uh, and, and then die. So I've picked out this, um, this plastic uh, pet keeper. We're gonna put water in it and then we're gonna put the fish in it and euthanize it. You don't really need to fill it up all the way with water, just enough so that the fish is immersed and that way you don't have to put that much clove oil to euthanize it. I'm also going to put a little bit of dechlorinator in it just so the fish doesn't die or get distressed prematurely from chlorine. The next step is to uh, net the fish out and put him in the water. You can see he's not really putting up much of a fight. I mean, he's still moving around a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a quick visual inspection before we do it. It looks like he has... Um, just some blood or um, blood damage on his operculum, his gill covers. His belly is smaller though. He looks like he's lost a bunch of weight. There's blood on the tip of his tail. And like I said, he does live alone uh, in that sump tank. It's a 55 gallon tank. 
So he's just he's just not he's just not going to make it. So we'll just um, hasten his his death and end his suffering. Clove oil doesn't mix that easily with water. So what I usually do is uh, get a small amount of water in a separate container and then put clove oil in that container and then try to mix it as best as I can. They say that you need 0.4 milliliters per liter of water, but I honestly don't really mess around too much and I kind of just put a bunch in here. And as you can see, the oil is does not mix with water easily. So what I usually do also is put a lid on it and then um, I shake it so that the oil globules um, become as small as possible and get dispersed as much as possible in the water. And then when that's done, we pour the clove oil in. Just um, allow it to work. It's a little hard to watch, but um, I really wanted to show you, you know, uh, a humane process of uh, putting a fish down to minimize suffering and, and pain. So it's been about 10 minutes and I haven't seen any signs of uh, gill cover movement uh, from the fish and there hasn't been any movement at all. So it's pretty safe to say that uh, it's passed away. So once it's passed away, you can uh, do a couple of things. One is to bury it or dispose of it in a, an environmentally friendly manner, AKA, you know, you can probably throw it in your backyard if you want like a raccoon to eat it or something. Uh, you could bury it and um, optionally, you could do an autopsy on it, which um, I'm thinking about doing. Probably gonna put it in the fridge for a little bit just so I can kind of distance myself emotionally from the event and then potentially uh, do an autopsy to try to figure out if there's anything visible or notable inside its body that might have caused it to die. Um, rest in peace.